is it says uh so that's that's uh surah 9 5 it says but when the forbidden months are past then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them and seize them beleaguer them and lie and wait for them in every strategy of war but if they repent establish regular prayers practice regular charity then open the way for them for allah is off forgiven most merciful Now we'll go down right here, we'll see the context. How can there be a league before Allah and His Messenger with the pagans except those whom you made a treaty near the sacred mosque? As long as these stand true to you, stand you true to them, for Allah loveth the righteous. How can there be a league seeing that if they get an advantage over you, they respect not in you the ties of either kinship or covenant? With fair words from their mouths, they entice you, but their hearts are adverse from you, and most of them are rebellious wicked. So here we see the context is actually what it's saying is very clear that they, they, they were the first ones basically to violate. They're not respecting the covenant, the ties of kinship or covenant, which is the covenant is we will not fight each other. Now, what you're going to start seeing is that their, their hearts are adverse from you so merely meaning in their heart they they hold they hate you they're, they're against what you're talking about and so at any moment that, that they want to they're going to violate their promise of not to attack you what you're going to now see is that uh is that they were actually the first to attack and that is the context that they were the first to attack not the muslims are supposed to attack okay now here's what it says about them in a believer they respect not the ties of either kinship or a promise, or covenant, or oath. It is they who have transgressed the bounds. Who transgressed the bounds? The Muslims? No. It's they that transgressed the bounds. Then it says, But if they repent, and establish regular prayers, and practice regular charity, they are your brother in faith, though we ex thus we explain the signs and details for those who understand. So what that's saying basically is, hey, if they turn away from, you know, uh, 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 what they're doing against you and they become of those who are praying and they become of those who do the charity then they're your brothers in faith which means quite naturally you're not going to be attacking them you're not going to be attacking you you're not going to be attacking them so uh, you gotta remember in, in, in Arabian society once you attack me and I fight you back I continue to fight you until you're done with so this verse is basically telling you uh, listen there's a clause here says, hey, if they turn away from what they're doing and they're establishing the prayers and they're paying charity, they're your brothers in faith. And we're explaining you this, this signs, the signs in detail for you to understand. But then it says right here, but if they violate their oaths after their promise, what is that oath that they're violating? It's attacking you and taunt you for your faith. Fight ye the chiefs of unfaith for the, because why? Because they're Muslim or because they're non-Muslim? No, because their oaths are nothing to them so that they may be strained. Then on you see, and then what we see is the next ayah, 13. Allah has to actually urge the believers. The believers aren't bloodthirsty. Allah has to urge the believers to fight them. Will you not fight people who violated their oaths, plotted to expel the messenger, and took the aggressive by being the first to assault you? Do you fear them? No, it is Allah whom you should fear, more justly fear, if you believe. Fight them. To assault you. Do you fear them? No, it is Allah whom you should ju more justly fear, if you believe. Fight them, and Allah will punish them by your hands. Cover them with shame, and help you to victory over them, and heal the breasts of the believers. You see the context? The context is... Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was teaching them Islam about that there's only one God. They they were making money off the idols. Okay. When they was making money off the idols, people in Arabia used to bring their idols from all over and, you know, house them up in the Kaaba and people would make money. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started telling them about the oneness of Allah, they felt there was an economic threat. So they rejected his message. They told him to stop teaching and then... When they, they, they attacked him eventually because the numbers started growing because they felt like there was an economic threat. And so therefore, uh, although they may have heard some of the stuff was true and even some of them like sounds logic, sounds true. There's only one God, but the economics 
is what got them. So they was like, I'm not becoming a Muslim. You need to stop teaching that. He wouldn't stop teaching it. So then they decided to attack him physically, harass him physically, oppress him physically, oppress the Muslims physically. Finally, if you read that verse right there, it says, Allah's asking, will you not attack? Will, will you not fight them back? They attacked you first. Right. So right here, you see a loss telling the believe the believers went bloodthirsty. They just wanted to attack and fight and kill. They had to be pushed by Allah to fight because they didn't want to fight. Remember, this is their blood. This is their family. OK, you guys need to stop twisting this Quran. And I'm talking to both Muslim and non-Muslim. Stop twisting it. This is his family or his tribe. They didn't want to fight. They weren't bloodthirsty. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushed them because they were just getting oppressed. So that's that's that. Okay? That's the context of fight them and you know, main strategy of war, right? It's because they, they violated their oaths, they violated their promises of no fighting, and they broke the the, the, the treaty between they broke the rules that, that apply to just family. This is my blood you're doing this to me. And your word is no good. I can't just sit here and keep letting you attack me. So I fight back. Now another ayat that they use is don't take the disbelievers for friends. The word is alawiliya. And alawiliya means a protector. Or uh, in this sense it would be an advisor of your worldly life. So for example I have my way of life which is called Islam. It tells me how to behave in life. I don't need your advice on how to behave in life. Because you in my way deem it's different. And you're going to tell me some opposite. For example, if you're if you're uh, a, a a now Muslim, most times uh, you will tell me your advice in life as far as to, for example, if I say uh, should we go eat pork, you say sure. There's nothing wrong with eating pork, but in my deen, my way of life, eating pork is is not correct. Now, as far as taking disbelief for friends, it's right here. Here's one of the here's the verses that puts it in context. That's what I'm showing you today. Context verses. All right, that's Surah 60 and uh, Surah 8. All right, Surah 60, Ayah 8 and Ayah 9. All right, let's look at this real quick. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It says, Allah forbids you not with regard to those who fight you. To those who fight you not for your faith, nor drive you out of your homes from dealing kindly and justly with them. For Allah loveth those who are just. Allah only forbids you with regard to those who fight you for your faith and drive you out of your homes and support others in driving you out from turning to them for friendship and protection. It is such as turn to them in these circumstances that do wrong. Okay. Again, Allah forbids you not with regard to those who fight you not because of your faith, nor drive you out of your homes from dealing kindly and just for them with them. For Allah loveth those who are just. Allah only forbids you with regard to those who fight you because of your faith and drive you out of your homes and support others in driving you out from turning to them for friendship and protection. It is such as turn to them in these circumstances that do wrong. That is the answer to, can I take a disbelief of friend? What does that mean? Uh, the Quran says in other verses, uh, don't take the disbelief for friends. They're not friends. You're only protect believers are protected one another. Listen, believers are protected one another in their way of life. As far as I, I, I have a, a question on my way of life and I'm talking to a fellow believer about what we should do in our deen. So yes, they're my protector. They're my friend. Okay, but it doesn't mean that I'm not I'm not I'm not allowed to be nice and kind to non-Muslims. That that's a lie. Okay, and there's people that's propagating this silly stuff. Um, the one verse, uh, my time. The one verse that says, um, "Fight the Christians until they pay the jizya tax." You know, if you go look up the taps here to that, that verse it was at, as at that time because the Romans were attacking. Okay, the Romans are coming to the Muslim lands, and so when it said fight them, it said fight them, fight the people, fight them until they pay the jizya, or you know, or if they become Muslim, and th th that's only logical. 
Okay, first of all, foreigners coming into your to your land of Arabia and they're trying to attack you because Islam is spreading because Romans had certain areas of Arabia under lock, meaning they were controlling it. They were an imperial of power. So when Islam started spreading, they felt that that was a threat to their being an empire. So therefore, they they sent threats that they were going to come in and kill Prophet Muhammad and arrest him, things of this nature. And so the verse was revealed, fight them, right, and keep fighting them until... They're subdued, either paying the jizya and protection tax, meaning they're going to send guarantees that they're not going to attack you and fight you no more. And they're going to, you know, give you a tax, a tribute to show you, you know, a financial thing to show you, hey, we really mean what we're saying. Okay. We really, we really mean what we're saying. Because number one, you got to understand the Romans had control over uh, a land, parts of the land of Arabia, which is resources, which is material wealth. So the Jizya tax is material because they held, they had sway over material wealth, which is land. So therefore, to prove to me that you're not going to attack, you have to pay in return wealth, a tax. Because that's what you held sway over. Or if you were to become Muslim, then you don't have to obviously pay the tax because you're not a threat no more. Why? Because according to the Islam, a believer is the is the brother of another believer and a sister. They don't attack each other. So automatically that clause goes away. Automatic. You're a believer now. You're not, you're not supposed to be on enmity like that. Right? So that's only logical that it would go away. And so those would be the two main reasons why this would go away because before that you were attacking person you are imperial power so of course i would have to implement those two things look at you say okay these two conditions is the reason why i shouldn't fight you back right after that uh you know i I will admit that there may have been some muslim rulers way later who may have taken that verse and out of context applied it another way and start saying well and this is where i disagree with other muslims on i don't i don't believe that that you should go around and and implement that on um other people, I believe that that, that was a, a situational verse. You see, all of these um, ayats that deal with the Jizya tax verse actually deals with only the Muslims having to fight the Hassanid Arab Christians and the Roman Christians because they were the specific ones who were transgressing against the Muslims, right? So the Jizya uh, tax actually in itself, if you look at it, it wasn't really uh, supposed to be from what we're seeing here for all Christians and all Jews and things. But this is the interpretation that occurred as Islamic history unfolded. But indeed, it actually appeared only for specific, as we see, it was only revealed for specifically the Roman Christians and the Ghassanid Arabs uh, who were fighting against Islam. Other than that, Islam was not supposed to be spread by the sword for the sake of ruling. All right. So, um... So if there's any Jews or Christians who do the same thing that those Romans or Ghassan Arabs did who are Christians, then the tax will be posed upon them. But it should not be applied to any Christians or Jews or whoever who do not oppress the Muslims. So the Jesus should not be established. But in Islamic history, there were many interpretations that came that did do this. But just remember this. These are nothing but ishtihad. These were nothing but interpretations. It was not a final thing, nor locked, nor fixed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.